was the face of both good and evil. Union Cavalry Colonel Fielding Hurst was despised and admired as he clashed with Confederates in West Tennessee. Fielding Hurst was either a demon or a patriot. Depends on your vantage point. You know, who's your hero? Who's your saint and who's your sinner? No trespassing signs ward off would-be visitors from a decrepit old house in Purdy, Tennessee of McNary County. It's where Colonel Hurst once lived as a wealthy farmer. Even though a slave owner himself, Hurst was opposed to secession. And he would soon be causing havoc for his enemies as the leader of local Union loyalists in the United States 6th Tennessee Cavalry. These were descendants of Revolutionary War soldiers whose grandfathers had fought to create this nation and that they weren't willing to just give it up. His primary role was as a guide and a scout. That was their primary role. They were invaluable. His men knew every single road in the area. But Hearst saw himself as protector of the Loyalist families in the area. That role brought him an opportunity to exact revenge against Confederate neighbors who had accused him of treason. He was put on trial and was sentenced to death. And the story goes that with the hangman's noose around his neck, that he was given a reprieve. Soon after, the cavalry commander earned a reputation as freedom fighter for the Northern cause and a terrorist to the South, in a land that became known as the Hearst Nation. He would concentrate on his former neighbors and he would make them pay. The more serious crimes would have been uh, uh, murder in retribution for other murders. Southern General Nathan Bedford Forrest declared that Fielding Hearst would be executed upon his capture. There's two sides to every story. Either side gave as good as they got. Hearst survived the war and even became a judge. His name evokes strong emotional response even today from some families in West Tennessee.